this episode, we're going to talk about permissions and authentication with the Django REST framework. But first, if you remember at the end of our last video, we were doing functions and I said there's a little homework to use class-based views with Django REST framework. We're real quick going to convert our function-based views over to class-based generic views. And we're going to simply start that off with importing our class-based generic views of list create API view and retrieve update destroy API view. So simple as deleting our function based views. And then we'll type out first our task list view and inherit from list create API view. There's going to be two properties that we need to set of query set, and that's going to basically get all of our objects. And then we're also going to set a serializer class of task serializer. Once that's done, this class-based view, it gets all of the tasks that we have for this particular object and lists them out, much like our get did. And then we also, it takes a post and creates a new object and returns that object back. And then if we just basically do the same thing except do task detail and use retrieve update destroy API view, that takes care of the rest where we get a single object back. We update a single object or we delete a single object. If you basically look at the code, we've just slimmed everything down and we have the exact same functionality. And then finally, to get this working, we actually need to go in and change our URLs. So we need to import our views and then we need to go ahead and insert those into our URL patterns. And after that, we're really done with our class-based views and we're ready to move on to the next section of implementing our permissions and authentication. In order to show how to do permissions and authentication and how they work, we need to set up our model to actually be owned by someone so that we can have permissions to where only the owner of a task can update it. Or when we create a task, it's assigned to the current user. To do this, we need to add an owner field to our task object and set a foreign key to our auth user. Then we just go into our task serializer and we're going to add an owner field to it. And instead of just inheriting from a straight default field, we're actually going to use an actual generic field for our serializer and we're going to specifically set it to owner.username so it uses the username property of our user model whenever we access it through our API. And then in our fields of our meta class, we're going to be sure to include owner. And that's really all there is that we need to do to set up a relationship between a user and a task. With that done, let's move on to our views where we can set our association. But first, let's actually abstract some of this out into a task mixin that we're going to use inside of our APIs. We're just going to set our query set and serializer class like normal. And we're going to create a pre-save method. And this is actually where we're going to do our association whenever we either update or create a new task because what we're going to do is before it saves we're going to set the the owner of the task object to the current user and then after that we're just going to inherit the mixin in both of our classes and since it's the same functionality for both we're just going to put in pass and we're good to go because at this point since we're inheriting our mixin in both classes we have a query set and we have our serializer class and we have the pre-save method which is going to get used again on creation of a new object or updating of an object. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to handle permissions so that only a person that owns the object can actually modify it so that somebody can't accidentally or maliciously update an object of somebody else's. To create a permission we're basically going to create a class and then one of the methods in that class is going to return true or false and we're going to put logic in place to determine whether it returns true or false. From there, we're going to attach that permission to our class-based views. It's then going to evaluate all of the permissions inside of the tuple to make sure that every single one of them is true. If any of them return false, then the execution of that view is not authorized. Permissions can be very custom or very generic. In this case, we're going to write our own permission class, but Django REST Framework has several generic permissions that you can use as well. To get started, we're going to import our base permission class. And then we're going to create a class of our own called is owner or read only. We're going to inherit from base permission. And then we're going to use a method has object permission, and this is what's this is the method that's going to be called automatically by our class-based view. 
Inside of our method, we're going to check the request to see if the method that's being called is inside of a safe methods data structure, which contains get, post, and head. Those are considered safe methods to be called by anyone. And in this context, that's true because we want to be able to, to do a get to get a specific object or a list of objects. And we want to be able to do a post to make sure we can create an object because we're going to use put and delete to modify our objects in some way. Then we're going to return a boolean value and do an evaluation in the return of object.owner is equal to request.user. This should evaluate to true, and if it does evaluate to true, then we have permission to do what we're going to do. If not, it's going to return false, and the execution of that view is going to stop, and we're going to get an unauthorized response. And setting up our permission is that simple. In order to associate that with our views, we need to first import the isOwner or read-only permission. And then in our task mixin, we're going to set a permission classes property. And then we're going to provide a tuple of permission classes. So you can add as many permissions um, checks as you want to add so that you can get really fine-grained in who can access what. And that's it. That's all there is to doing our own permissions. All right, now we're ready for our demo. We're going to do the side-by-side -side comparison and do curl requests again. So we do a curl. We see we don't have any tasks. So let's go ahead and create one. So with this, we're going to create a task. And if you'll notice the end, we have the hyphen u and then the username colon password. This will authenticate us against our API, which uses the Django authentication system integrated through Django REST framework. Since I have a user called %20, then, and it's using the normal Django system, then it's good to go. There we go, we get our response back, and it is the object that we just created. So here we're going to try to update our task and set it to true. But as you can see, we have failed on our authentication attempt because we didn't provide a username and password. So let's go ahead and provide our username and password. And we get our update. So with this, we're going to try and delete our task object. And it doesn't work because we're not authenticated. Add our authentication. and we successfully delete it. We can verify that by doing another pull on getting all of our tasks. And there you go, that is using Django REST framework with some basic authentication and custom permissions.